When I woke up, I was all alone. Everyone's gone. Is it because of those monsters? What do I do now? Do I fight and live? Or do those monsters get me? I don't have any reason to go on living. But... But I'm scared to die. I'm so afraid of pain. Should I run away? I want to find somebody. I don't like being alone. But... But is there anyone left alive? And so begins Silent Hill 2, Born from a Wish, also known colloquially as the Maria Scenario. Mm. So as usual, it's Peter, Michaela and our player Scott. I'm Peter. <laughs> yes. It's quite an interesting uh, opening, I always thought, because it very much is designed to mirror Silent Hill 2. And you've got the very sort of introspective opening of her looking in the mirror sort of deciding what to do, I guess. Although she doesn't cast a spell on her own nose. <laughs> no, she doesn't. And we're in Heaven's Night. Chinese Cleaver. Mm. Specifically. It's very specific, actually. Yes, and of course it makes sense that we start here, because uh, this is where we first find Maria in the main game. And out into the streets we go. This feels good to be back to the, the grey of Silent Hill 2. Oh, it's nice details. It's been uh, quite a while, actually, since we finished Silent Hill 2, until we've gotten round to this, through various issues. In fact, we've completely changed the whole process. Now using a, a completely different um, program to put together the footage. Because of course, uh, one of the things that <clears throat> hopefully makes this a little bit more special than usual is that we fixed all of the aspect ratios. So everything's full frame where appropriate and 4x3 with bars at the side where full frame isn't appropriate. Yeah, when it looks better. Because sometimes you can't really change the, uh, it's things like the menus and stuff. It's not so great. Yeah, we even got rid of the, uh, the cursors. <laughs> just for fun. Yes, yeah, so it's sort of back to staple gameplay. Looking around, picking things up. Like that. Completely ignoring the enemies, which is probably for the best, to be fair. Yes, and in, in this one you're mostly able to. More so than uh, the main game, in fact. Because in the main game, obviously, it uh, makes you fight bosses occasionally. Yeah. Or does it? Because uh, there is the thing with um, Pyramid Head where you can just not bother finishing fighting him and then uh, it'll he'll just wander off eventually. I didn't know that. Well, I think that's the case, unless I'm very much mistaken. I'm sure someone will correct us if we're yes, wrong. Yes, feel free to comment. Do you usually like some of the sections where the camera doesn't quite follow you? Are you wandering off into the mist? Interesting run, Maria has. To shiny behind. Mmm. <laughs> I mean, no, oh, I hadn't noticed. Mm. 
amazing how quickly the oppressive atmosphere weighs on you. Yeah, this is just running, like, not particularly finding anything to do still. Which is oddly enough something that people say they want from games, and a lot of the times I don't think they really do, because they have this wonderful phrase, it doesn't hold your hand. <laughs> But uh, unfortunately, that's usually a euphemism for directionless. Silent Hill 2 lacks direction only in certain parts and only to create a certain mood. And then from that point onwards, it's generally quite obvious what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, I think we're doing the obvious now, which is uh, fill out your map. See which roads you can actually go down, which ones just end. Yep. Or are cordoned off by something or other. Also quite nice... ...that uh, there's no really long overblown intro. Um, Silent Hill 2's is wonderful, but it's quite long. Quite cutscene heavy. Which I know sometimes people don't really like, because it feels like it's pulling you out of sort of the interactivity. Aha! I suppose again, while we're doing Silent Hill, Hill other games, we're following blood trails now. You grab that ammo quite quickly there as well. Yes, the blood trails tell us where to go. I think we've kind of lost them, have we? Lost what? He seems to be going back. It's not that way. Oh, we'll get there. It's to the left, but... We will, shall be drawn there inexorably. No, it's, it's further down. There's something in that truck, but I don't know if we're going to miss it or not. No, there we go. There's the final blood splat just outside the house. <laughs> we're skipping that whole little courtyard in favour of going into this... Giant spiderweb. Covered in spider webs, yes. Ooh, the butt's very shiny crying. there. <laughs> it Look is, that. yeah. But I would point out, while we weren't in it, I quite like that little courtyard. Uh, because it feels very narrow and sort of hedged in with, like, I think three monsters in there. Oh, and before we get too into the mansion, I should mention that this is in Prologic. So if you do want to listen to this in wonderful... I think it's 5.0 ProLogic surround. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> then um, turn on your ProLogic decoder now. It will probably say this in the description, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Got a map. a map. Important. I like the, the do not use plate on the fireplace. You can actually though. read that without looking at it, yeah. As in bringing up the text. Though, uh, as a brief aside, this house has a map. It's a bit weird. I don't know, it's big enough to have a map. I guess. It's not like um, a certain character from Homecoming <laughs> who has a map for his own house. Or uh, the one in Downpour as well, where you get a map for the diner. It's yeah. like, it's a diner, it has a kitchen and a main room and a bathroom. And you should stay out the kitchen anyway. <laughs> I was just kind of looking at something there. I always still got the head tracking motion. Bullets and more bullets. Good use of silence here to um Yeah, it's kind of eerie. You're sort of anticipating things, I think. Contrast from uh the rest of the game. Yeah. So I I really like the dynamic shadows and stuff they've got though. Occasionally it does twitch. I'm just gonna avoid that monster. <laughs> Oh, we did want to present this as a, a sort of a blind playthrough, but uh, 
We have played this once before. Uh, Scott has, rather. Yeah, unfortunately, we uh, uh, was played through and it didn't work out that time. We're going to be able to edge around it unscathed, but <gasps> leave the health drink. Yes. No health drink. Well, we can't advance anyway, so we still have to go back out, I think, don't we? Because mm -hmm. it's locked. Something to come back to. There's quite a bit of back and forthing and throwing and toing at well, the beginning. That monster's now gone. How strange. Should be getting our first cutscene soon as well. Well, first cutscene after the intro. Is somebody there? Open up. Hello? Stop it. You're disturbing me. <gasps> Thank God. I finally found somebody. Can you open the door? No. But why? <sighs> Is it really necessary for me to answer all your tedious questions? Yes. Oh. I didn't know that. <laughs> I want to be alone. Other people just irritate me. I just want to see another human face. Do you know what's happening in this town? There's no one here. Just monsters. Yes. I know. But, so what? It has nothing to do with me. No one here means there's no one to disturb me. You want to be alone in this insane asylum? Yes, exactly. But, how can you say that it's this town that's insane? Perhaps it's we who are insane. Both of us, hopelessly insane. Are you satisfied? Would you leave me alone? My name is Maria. What's your name? Hemingway? Baldwin. Ernest? I'll be back. In fact, they'll be back next time.